Okay, welcome everyone to this week's webinar sponsored by the Chicago DOE Alliance Center here at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce one of our colleagues, Exgondar Sasha Baterev from the Army Research Laboratory's Detonation Science and Modeling Branch of its Weapons and Materials Research Directorate. Sasha's research is focused on the physical and chemical processes of materials of interest to the Army, including materials at high pressure, that's high pressure physics, energetic materials, and materials related to armor and armaments. Sasha received his PhD in physics from Moscow State University in 1995. He worked as a research associate at Queen's University in Belfast, UK, and was a postdoc at UT Austin, uh, and also had positions at NREL and Vanderbilt University before going to ARL in 2010. So we're very pleased you're joining us and we're pleased you've been able to join us for so many of our webinars so far. We're looking forward to your talk, Sasha. Hello, everyone. Thank you for introduction. My name is Iskander. This is how Alexander the Great was called in Asia. This is not a Russian name. Surprisingly enough, this name has a frequent connotation in Russian military. The name is given to mobile short range ballistic missile system produced and deployed by the Russian military. NATO reporting name is Stone. The missile has several different conventional warheads and it can also carry nuclear warheads. The extended introduction is to set up the, the purpose of our research at RL, to create and exploit scientific knowledge for transformational overmatch. Here's outline of my talk. First, I'll be talking about calculations of re relatively new traditional explosives, LLM-172 and BDN-APM. Then I'll be discussing future generation of energetic materials, which may be available in 10, 20 years, extended solids in amorphous and crystalline structure. We predict the structure and properties of polyCO, polyCO, and NH, and sodium, nitrogen solids. The main problem of the materials is stability. PolyCO loses the superior properties in ours. In the last part of my talk, I'll discuss the effective way to increase stability of the system. LLM has good thermal stability and power approaching HMX and may have applications as a booster or a main charge energetic material. Here's a structure of LM172 crystal containing four molecules. This is experimental Raman spectrum measured at 0.05 GPA black compared with DFT linear response theory calculations read. Calculated spectrum reproduces all experimental peaks, but shifted by certain number of wave vectors to the low frequency range. The Raman spectra peaks are shifting to higher frequencies upon pressure and might be clearly seen from the Fever is especially for middle and high frequency ranges, the systematical shift. Here's a visualization of vibration crystalline modes from dynamical matrix in terms of atomic movements. One may see that high frequency peaks are related with stretching of uh, nitrogen carbon, carbon, carbon bonds, while well, frequency, uh, low frequency region 
corresponds to uh, quite complex collective modes. At such a GPA, we are far from pressing use decomposition. But there are new peaks emerging above 10 GP. So there are several peaks around 744 in the worst centimeters. <clears throat> and this, the mode might be associated with a new molecular CO stretching mode. The decomposition mechanism based on the new molecular mode proposed for LLM 172 is that of isomerization of one of the peripheral nitro groups into C O N O arrangements and subsequent N O loss. We don't see these drastic changes in Raman spectra. So there is another reason for the new Raman peak around 750 uh, inverse centimeters. And it might be related with collective modes. So it's shown here. It is enhancing rocking of pentagons about 10 GP results in the new mode. So there are two explanations of uh, this emerging new peak above 10 GP. What about electronic structure for LM172 crystal? Important information about chemically active atoms in the crystal may give calculation of partial density of electron states. From the plot, uh, one may see that the major contribution to the region of uh, near the uh, highest occupied states comes from oxygen, from nitro groups. So I'm not sure you can see here, but this is about 20. This is about 10 and this is about, about two, this oxygen from the rings. So these are calculation of perfect crystals, but explosive solid are not perfect crystals. The solids have defects and the high concentration of defects, the high sensitivity of explosives. The most common defect are voids and cracks. Obviously, I can't model 50 nanometers, uh, 50 micrometers void presented by Dana Dlot in his talk, but I can calculate surface of LLM172, hoping that it is a reasonable model for inner surface of a big void. Here we are showing results of simulation of LLM172 surface using quantum mechanical molecular dynamics implemented in CP2K. The goal of simulation is to monitor first fragments decomposed from the surface under heating. So this is a, a zero one zero surface and these are fragments. NO and NO2 irreversibly leaving the surface. With time. The surface might be considered as the inner surface of the void. The main conclusion from the modeling is that there is a significant mass transfer near voids. The same effect of detaching of NO2 fragments from different orientation of the surface. Bulk is on the top here. And this is detaching uh, fragments. In the reference, we calculated uh, in this paper, we calculated much thicker slab with 30 layers. Effect of irreversible mass transfer from the surface is the same. So these are our main results. Of that part, probably the most important are uh, that we found new Raman peak upon compression and explain uh, uh, the peaks uh, in terms of possible molecular and collective crystal modes. 
And secondly, quantum mechanical molecular dynamic simulations show significant mass transfer near surface of big voids LM172. BDN APM, eight molecules in the crystal, large size of the unit cell with 248 atoms. This secondary explosive with high heat resistance and low impact sensitivity. Mediocre detonation velocity, higher than that of TNT, HNS, TKX55, and DAAF. Friction sensitivity about three times higher than that of RDX and HMX, which makes it perfect for formulations. What happens with the um, BDN APM under high pressure? Mass density is obviously increasing. Rate compression in decreasing upon decompression. Pen gap is also decreasing. Here's the band structure of BDN APM at ambient pressure and at 30 GP. Here's the um, band structure and density of states, red P states, blue S states. This is a band gap. Band gap is decreasing significantly, but far from closing. The calculated band gap of BDN APM at ambient condition 174. This is a band gap. Partial density of states shown in the figure indicates that the main contribution near top of the valence band results not from NO2 group, but from nitrogen atoms. So that's contribution from the nitrogen atoms. And this is Fermi level. From nitrogen M from the ring structure. This might be important for models of decomposition based on ring fusion. Here's calculated uh, XRD compared with experimental from Klopotky's paper, perfect agreement. And this is what happens with pressure. There's a systematic shift of peaks from ambient to 30 GP. Experimental, here are experimental peaks obtained by uh, Jonathan Binion, it shows pretty much the same shift of peaks upon compression and decompression. Here we present results of density functional perturbation theory calculation of Raman spectra. These are the largest calculation I ever done and ever seen. Two 148 atoms in the unit cell, 764 normal modes, two, three hours per node, three, four months of only CPU time of powerful high performance DOD computers to calculate this structure. So this ambient and this is 30 GP. Raman intensity peaks are shifting to higher frequency with applied pressure. There is a central symmetry in the lattice, and as a con consequence, Raman active modes are not I, R active. All peaks were uh, identified in terms of atomic movements based on dynamic mat matrix. Again, low frequency modes are related with complex collective modes. And um, in the, whilst the, in the high frequency region, the Raman peaks are related mainly with stretching of CH and NH bonds. The best and most reliable method to calculate heat formation of energetic mo molecules is dense heat, method developed by Edbert and Betsy Rice in our lab. 
It is based on a reasonably accurate calculation by Gaussian of molecule and some fitting combined in a set of scripts. The mass density calculated in our crystal DFT and estimate of heat of formation are comparable with those found in Klapotki's paper. These are uh, theoretical calculations. Let us have a closer look at the reasons of systematical deviation mass density calculated in EDAT in crystal DFT. EDAT is using a great idea that the volume inside 0 0.001 electron per cubic bore contains 99.99% .99 of electron density. In the figure we depicted this, the lowest isosurface here. Yeah. One may see that uh, there is a change in the isosurface, which presumably results in hybridization and repulsion of charge density at the boundary, this one. That's why crystal DFT calculations of density systematically results in low mass density of the crystal. Here we present heats of formation calculated with dense heat together with mass density for LLM 172, BDM, APM, and two others explosive, Boden and DTO. Boden is a metal melt cast explosive material that is potentially both more powerful and environmentally friendly alternative to TNT. DTO is a relatively new energetic material with multiple potential military application. It is important to mention that DTO has four molecules per unit cell and Boden only one molecule per unit cell. The less number of the molecules in a unit cell, um, the closer values of mass density calculated using EDAT and crystal DFT, they're almost identical for Boden. Details of the pressure dependence of bodens could be found in this paper. Here are the main takeaways from this part. The less number of molecules in the unit cell, the closer values of mass density calculated using molecular EDAT and crystal DFT. Now we're coming to extended solids potentially new type of energetic materials. The story began more than 15 years ago after a paper in Nature by a group from Lawrence Lermo National Lab presented the first experimental evidence that the extended solid derived from polycio is indeed a high energy density material. If to start from molecular delta phase of poly CO, 128 atoms, 64 CO molecules, and simulate isotropic compression, then at 7 GPA, one may see beginning of polymerization. In the 20 GPA, all intact molecules are included in random covalent network of poly CO. It consists of network of rings and penetrating and bending chains. If to release the pressure down to one GP, the covalent network would survive and represent material with high density and energy content exceeding conventional energetic materials. Obviously there is an evidence of pressure stabilization of poly covalent amorphous structure. So almost all intact molecules included in the network. What happens if to compress the random network further? Pressure removes small atom rings accumulating significant strain. After the release of the pressure down to five GP, the high pressure ring structure remains the same. So it can be seen from this table. 
mass density is changing from 3.03 .03 gram per cubic centimeter at 25 GP to 3.47 and 45 GP and down to 2.26 gram per cubic centimeter at 5 GP due to increase of the interstitial volume. While most of covalent rings in the amorphous network are sustained. Raman spectrum of amorphous polycyo calculated using density functional perturbation theory is shown here, together with visualization of CC and CO stretching. Vibration modes corresponding to the peaks at 16. 100 and 1800 inverse centimeters are considered as a sig signatures of polycyon. <clears throat> when I showed the results to Chun Shi Yu, he said, Tell Betsy, Betsy Rice is our theoretical group leader. Tell Betsy to introduce nitrogen in the network of polycyon. The idea is quite straightforward. Because CO is isoelectronic with N2. C has one less electron than nitrogen. Oxygen has one more. N2 and CO both uh, have a molecular delta phase. But there is a quite a difference between N2 and CO molecules. This is dipole moment and polarization of CO molecule. We demonstrate that polarization is good for polymerization. Let us start from small amount of uh, CO in molecular delta phase, almost pure N2 crystal, and start computationally, isotropically compressing it. 20 GPA, no polymerization. 30 GPA, no polymerization. Only at 40 GPA, one polymeric molecule. And, and two molecules at 50 GPA. If to increase concentration of CO to 50%, the situation is changing. 128 atoms in the unit, 64N molecules, 32 molecules, 64 nitrogen atoms in the initial delta phase. Even in 20 GP, we got two nitrogen molecules, so much lower pressure for polymerization. At 50 GP, 22 atoms of, of nitrogen are included in the network. If to add more CO in the mixture with nitrogen with N2, that uh, at 10 and 20 GP, there is no incorporation on nitrogen in the network and no polymerization of CO network. So remember, so you know, delta crystal polymerized at 7 GP. So with nitrogen, there is no polymerization. So nitrogen molecule play a negative role in polymerization of, of, of CO. The random structures formed at 30 GP and the 40 nitrogen atoms are included in the network at 50 GP. So the calculation shows that um, the higher concentration of CO, the more nitrogen atoms are included in the network. The network consists of chains and rings. Upon decompression from 50 GP to 5 GP, seven nitrogen atoms still remain in the rings. CO molecules are lowering the transition pressure to incorporate nitrogen atoms in the network. And upon decompression, the presence of CO molecules in the mixture stabilize the network structure. We found that the weakest link to be first disconnected from the network are the ends of the chains. Rings split and form the chains. Atoms from the ends of the chains got disconnected first. This slide shows modif modification of Hirschfeld charges under pressure. 
let me remind that Hirschfeld charge defined as a difference between the solid and unrelaxed atomic charge density. One may see from the figure from this figure that there is an increase in minimum charge peaks for nitrogen upon decompression from 50 GP to 5 GP. And this negative peaks corresponds to the end of the chains. At the bottom of the page, there is the same kind of picture for polysio at 13 GP during partial polymerization. So you also see these peaks and they correspond to the ends of the chains and to the atoms which will be disconnected first upon decompression. Simple calculation of compression, decompression several years ago. Since then, we got several codes uh, to search for new structures like Calyp Calypso by Yan Ming Ma and co authors, Extal Opt by Eva Zurich, and um, Abinitio Random Structures Search by Chris Pickard. We are using great evolutionary code USPEX developed by Artem. Uganov, Andriy Lyakhov, and uh, Kwan Zhu from University of Nevada. This is how typical convergence of evolutionary process looks like. Enthalpy, minimum enthalpy blue versus um, number of generation. This is one of the central slides of my presentation. Convergence is not variational. Typically, evolution stops when low, lowest enthalpy structure does not change for 10, 20 generations. So somewhere here. From the figure one, we see that even after 40 generations, there is a possible drop of enthalpy into another drop. So there is no full optimization of the structure in the evolutionary algorithm. Just a resulting structure corresponding to the certain number of generations members. And this is like a parameter of uh, convergence. So there is always a room for improvements of the papers on evolutionary predictions. Computers are getting bigger to handle longer evolution and the larger population size to handle larger unit cells of predicted structure. We adjusted USPEX code for DOD supercomputers and were able to perform the longest to my knowledge evolutionary simulation up to 50, 150 generation and about 4,000 structures. Population size is limited by 40 atoms. We performed the extended evolution simulations and obtained a new covalent structure of CON at 30 40 GP. It has high mass and energy density. Chun Shi Kyu called the structure a copolymer and confirmed the existence of the structure experimentally. Laser heating of mixture of CO and N2 above uh, 1700 K and 45 GPE allow, allowed to obtain the structure with high mass density. 3.98 gram per cubic centimeter. This is comparable with cubic gauche density. Let me remind that pure nitrogen requires pressure about 110 GP and heating up to 2000 K. Significant lowering of the pressure and temperature, isn't it? Amorphous CON2 could be obtained even below 700 K at 25 GP. Remember our analysis of amorphous network of CONN2, adding a carbon monoxide significantly lowered the transition pressure to polymeric structure. Here's a convex hull diagram of a mixture of CON2 compared uh, with uh, other structures. So this is our structure, what we found, P43, and this is structure uh, corresponding two to one ratio 
found by um, Chris Picard using um, ab initio random structure source. So this structure shown here, they're almost uh, the same, but there's slight difference between entropy. But this is our structure and um, from the top view, this thing looks like a square. It is not a square. So I rotated this a little bit. And this, this structure in the middle is a spiral. Um, this structure was obtained by also by Chinese group. And they predicted that it might be stable at ambient condition. Unfortunately, experiments by Chung Shi Q show that it's not true. This structure is decomposing at 20 GP to epsilon phase and at 10 GP to delta phase. So it's, uh, it's not recoverable. So this is a um, phonon dispersion curves. There are no negative imaginary frequencies, which indicates dynamic stability of the structure. And this is the Raman and infrared spectra, which uh, are in general agreement with experimental results. The formation, so now we're coming to nitrogen um, extended solids. CO can lower the transition pressure, but hydrogen also can lower the transition pressure. The formation of nitrogen-hydrogen compound is a promising approach to obtain high energy density material. Multiple experimental reports indicate the synthesis pressure and temperature of high energy nitrogen network compounds significantly decrease when adding nitrogen to hydrogen to nitrogen. One, and two dimensional structures of nitrogen hydrogen mixtures are reported during synthesis and have also been obtained from simulations. However, the, however, the structures are not thoroughly established and well understood. Here we present the results of prediction of nitrogen hydrogen structures at press up to 50 GPA. Here is uh, uh, the uh, illustration how long evolution results in the changes of the structure. So this structure obtained after 100 generations and this structure obtained after 150 generations. Note rotation of the um, pentagons in the second layer. Here are results uh, for the structure prediction after evolution of 150 generation for 3 1 ratio. So 3 nitrogen, 1 hydrogen, 4 1, and 9 1. So high nitrogen concentration system at 10 GP and 50 GP. Both are evolutionary simulated. So both are results of evolutionary simulation. And these are not evolutionary simulation. We just took the high pressure phase and lowered the pressure from 50 to 10 GP just by isotropic decompression. Most of the structures are insulators and only these two structures are metallic. So these are results of calculation of band structure of this two metallic structures uh, using hybrid functional. And this is a structure at 50 GP. Uh, from, from our prospects, it's nice to have a system with a high energy density and high burning power. So this is again, uh, the structure predicted, and it's kind of similar to the structure predicted by Artyom Saganov group, but it, uh, it is more symmetric and has a lower enthalpy. 
are the structures thermodynamically stable in terms of convex hull construction? Some of them are typical structures with ammonia, ammonium, and nitrogen and H molecules. Chain structures sim similar to that find, found experimentally for oligomers by Alex Gancherov. In the variable concentration algorithm, one has much less generation and structure uh, and much less structure calculated than, um, than in a fixed concentration method. Particularly this, this structure for nine to one concentration was missed in a variable concentration method. So this convex school in is a compilation of both approaches. So we are coming to sodium nitrogen solids. So our collaboration with Carnegie Institute and Howard University is leveraging a real external project on metal nitrogen compounds obtained at high pressure. Tim Jenkins and Jonathan Binion have excellent new and big lab, which Russ Hamley visited just before the pandemic. Plenty of space for interested students. Maxim Bikov and co-authors found two new compounds, sodium N2 and sodium 3N2 shown in the figures. The pressure could be lowered even lower than 4 GP. It could be lowered to 2 GP. It won't be such a perfect phase. It will be a combination of several phase, but it still uh, will be a extended solid with a high energy density. The new systems are metallic and dynamically stable, which can be seen from this phone and density calculations. And this is a band structure for this is uh, sodium three and eight, and this is sodium nitrogen two. Since the systems are metallic, I couldn't calculate Raman intensity using polarization, but I could calculate Raman active modes. And this is a phonon density for the structures. So convex cool con construction confirms that the two structures are thermodynamically stable. So sodium N two and this um, sodium three and nitrogen eight. Another new system Maxim Bikov and Coast has found experimentally is sodium N5 with PMN21 symmetry group. The paper is going to be published online anytime soon. Sodium pentazolate was previously calculated by Ivan Alenik group. And for N, sodium N5, they found using USPEX CM symmetry group, the structure they found. The new structure has more atoms, 12 atoms in the unit cell compared with six atoms found previously. Population size or number of generation, as we discussed, previously it might be the reason that the structure with PMN 21 symmetry group was missing in the previous calculations. We calculated both structures with the same potentials and functional functionals and found that the new structure with PMN 21 mm, symmetry group of N sodium in five has a low enthalpy. If to use the result in convex hull construction, then the new structure runs out structure with CM symmetry group. So 
XXR, and this is previously found structure. Phonon density calculations of the new structure indicate that it's dynamically stable. Few words about energy content of poly CO. Plane wave DFT codes give reasonable estimates of standard enthalpy after calculations of reactants and products for crystals with ionic, covalent, and metallic bonding. If a crystal has small unit cell, up to 20, 30 atoms probably at most, in the unit cell we can calculate using DFT with periodic boundary conditions, crystals. Predicted structure of polysio shown in the slide are covalently bonded. This is a structure of, found by Chris Pickard and co authors using ab initio random structures search. And this is our structure found by USPEX simulations. They have slightly different, uh, well, significantly different. Uh, space groups, but uh, quite um, similar numbers of enthalpies. According to estimates uh, made by Chris Picker, the specific energy for this structure is 5.5 megajoules per kilogram, assuming that CO reacts with oxygen and converts completely into CO2. If not completely, and there is some carbon black or graphite remains then less than that. So we are taking the maximum full conversion. The energy of one kilogram of TNT is about 4.2 megajoules. Therefore, this structure of poly CO predicted structure is calculated to release energy about 1.3 times that, that of TNT. Our structure has slightly higher enthalpy of formation, but also slightly higher energy content, approximately 1.5 times exceeding TNT. These are very conservative estimates, but 50% increase in efficiency is, is a big deal. The question is how Stable are the recovered poly CO samples. After one hour, they are losing their superior properties and it's hard to use them in formulations. Next, we discuss one of the possible methods to improve stability of uh, highly doped poly CO. Novel synthesis of stable doped solid carbon monoxide VX hard X-ray radiation of strontium oxalate at ambient condition and high pressure was proposed in these two references by a group of uh, Michael Pravica from <clears throat> University of Nevada at, at Las Vegas. The synthetic method is based on observation that hard X-ray more than seven kilovies can have a powerful tool to harness decomposition reaction. Synthesis of high energy polymeric carbon monoxide after X-ray radiation of strontium and magnesium oxalate before or during compression may occur to the following reaction. After the treatment samples show practically the same infrared spectra, this is after one air exposure to air. And there are some peaks which are uh, specific for poly CO. We analyzed experimental XRD with strontium oxalate at 10 GP using virtual diffraction method and found that mixture of 40% uh, of monoclinic phase and 6% of clinic phase provide better agreement with experimental XRD. We used a method of virtual diffraction developed by Sean Coleman in our group. And this method allows to calculate XRD 
on high performance supercomputers with the same accuracy as Mercury from Cambridge Structure Database. The method might be important for structure search because it allows to calculate on fly XRD for newly predicted structures and compare with uh, desirable peak position. The same reaction as strontium oxalate is possible for magnesium oxalate. Michael Pravik and his students obtained polysio doped with magnesium as might be seen from the samples. This reddish circle correspond to the polysio. Experimental Raman spectra show signs of phase transition. Calculated Raman spectra for monoclinic and triclinic phase um, help to understand better the phase transition. It remains to find out if the stable, highly doped polysio with strontium or magnesium are energetic materials. For example, using clays induced air shock from energetic material, we have a material. We just need more materials for the test. In conclusion, I would like to acknowledge my collaborators, Jennifer Caesar Jenkins, Jonathan Benio, Sean Coleman, Betsy Rice, William Madsen, Ed Bird, James Lorenzos from our lab, Alexander Goncharov from Carnegie Institute, outstanding researcher, Maxim Bikov, and uh, Professor Mahmoud from Howard University, James Parker from Army Research Office of Ariel for managing the collaboration, Professor Chun Chik Yu and his students, particularly Yang J. Rui from Washington State University. Yang J. was working last time for Argonne National Lab. Professor Mike Pravica. Patrick C. Fligu, Kevin Pineda, his students from University of Nevada at Las Vegas. And of course, I have to acknowledge DoD supercomputers. Uh, I wish the managers of DoD Supercomputer Center would attend the talk because 90% of the figures are made using materials studio. 70% of calculations were performed using CASTEP. We are using the software 24 seven and need the license to be renewed for the next year. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sasha, for a very nice talk. These are very impressive calculations and very nice comparison to experiment. A number of your collaborators are in the audience, I'm sure there are questions for Sasha. Feel free to speak up, use the chat, or raise your hand. Um, hello, this is uh, James Parker. Hi, hey, Sasha, you? how are you? Very good, thank you. Hey. Hey, thanks for the uh, very interesting talk. Um, I, I don't actually have any technical questions. I just wanna say that I thought this talk was really fantastic and really showed you know, uh, the potential for discovery of really novel scientific uh, uh, ideas. I mean, new, new science that, that can be obviously directly relevant to uh, army needs. And, you know, I really like that you're taking advantage of the computational resources. And, uh, you know, if there's anything I can do on, uh, on my part to help you get that license renewed, let me know. I'll make a phone call if needed. <laughs> so th thanks for inviting me. This was super interesting. Thank you for coming. Uh, Thank you, James. Let me ask um, a, a general question. In the work that's been done using larger volume apparatus like Paris Edinburgh cells, you in principle have enough volume of material if you can recover and stabilize the material to do calorimetry, to look at the actual heat content to compare to experiment. 
Has that been attempted? This question uh, is probably Tim Jenkins knows better. We yeah, should... uh, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Tim. Yeah, so uh, we, we, we did some initial nano calorimetry work. Um, we've, we've been working on recovering it in the Paris Edinburgh cell, uh, but with the COVID uh, pandemic, it's been a little bit difficult to, to get that experiment accomplished. But yeah, it's something that we're working on. The problem is, of, of course, that you, if you try to do a, uh, like a gas experiment, it's, there's a lot of places that the uh, cell likes to leak. Right, it's a lot more difficult to do that than in a diamond anvil cell. That's right. Sure. Mm -hmm. Can I can I just comment as all, also uh, Russ? Uh, we have done Paris Edinburgh, uh, you know, irradiation experiments, and we did recover materials. And uh, so, yeah, we'd like to recover more. But yeah, absolutely, because they're very stable and uh, kind of like beer bottle glass. So uh, it it you know. Uh, we have a large volume press. We're just trying to get some funding for it, but uh, we absolutely uh, we we can sit, we can synthesize larger quantities when needed. Okay, thanks. More questions or comments? May I ask one? Yes, go ahead. Hello, it's Maxim from uh, from Howard. Uh, I have a question for your. Um, virtual diffraction calculations. So do I, do I understand correctly that you can, in your calculations, minimize not only the enthalpy, but also maximize the fit of this uh, calculated diffraction and experimental diffraction pattern? Absolutely. Um, we could calculate the XRD spectra on high performance supercomputers and uh, do the fitting the experimental peaks at the same time as we search for minimum enthalpy. That's, that, that can really be helpful for... It's not completely finished, but I would say we can do this. But, but just to clarify, are you using the diffraction that you're calculating to guide the search as opposed to looking at the lowest energy structure? Because you might want to look for metastable structures simply match the diffraction patterns. So is, is that built into the algorithm or is that what you're doing? Yeah, it's, it's, it's based on structure search and thermodynamical stability. But as we know from talk by Harold Hoffman, it's not enough just to have stable structure, important how reactive is structure to observe the structure in the real life. So. <clears throat> I would say comparison with the experimental observed peaks is also important. More questions? Okay, if not, thank you very much for a great talk. Our first one from ARL, we hope there will be more. Thank you for having me. Okay, we'll see you all next time. See you.